Hello everybody, Bob Gileo back at my workshop. Um, I want to uh, go over a video with you, uh, show you what to do when your jointer uh, is not adjusted right or sharp. And so uh, this is the jointer that I had uh, refurbished, restored back, I, I think uh, two years ago now. Um, anyways, uh, it's been running fine. I've been using it a lot, but recently I've been noticing that when I do a, when I'm planing the face of a Y two by six, what happens is, I don't know if you can see that, the it, it, it's really biased, biasing on one side, which means that it's cutting more on one side than the other, uh, and I'm getting a skewed uh, plane on my boards. So I'm gonna go over in this video uh, how, to, how to understand what's happening with this um, jointer and to sharpen the, the knives and to reinstall them and have them adjusted. Okay, so what I do is I push the fence all the way back out of the way of the knives, and here's one of the knives here. So um, what I'm seeing now is if I use this gauge block, and this is going to tell me uh, how uh, even this length of the knife is with the outfeed table, which determines whether there's any skew when this cuts uh, the board, especially wide boards. Now, since I sharpened these and adjusted these, oh, about, I'd say six months ago, six to nine months ago, um, they have worn in this area here, it looks like, because if, if I put the gauge block over here and I reach around, I remove the blade guide, by the way, and I move the, the drum, cutting drum, you see that gauge block does not move. But if I put it over here, and I do the same thing, it does move. So this knife here is high on this side of the table, where here it's not. And if I go and do this to all the knives, here's the other knife, you'll see the same occurrence here. You'll see that this knife is higher, which is not misunderstood because this is where I do this area of the, of the knife and this point here is where I do all my edge joining. So this gets a lot more use, this side of the knife, than this does because this is this side only gets used when I do a wide flat joining, uh, flattening of a board, a two by six. And so you can see how this end is higher and probably sharper than this end. So it's time to uh, take these out, take all these knives out, and have them resharpened, which I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and and then we're going to have them readjusted. The knives are held in with four uh, bolts uh, that are specially made for, for holding knives. And they have a head on them right here. And so to remove these knives, you have to loosen these bolts. And uh, it's an eight millimeter size. And if you try to use like a a regular full-size uh, wrench, uh, it's not going to fit in the slot because the slot is pretty narrow. So what I found works the best is I bought a set of these uh, miniature wrenches, or they used to be called ignition wrenches for working on ignitions of auto automobiles. So, um, and this fits quite nicely in here. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen these up, uh, and you just turn them uh, clockwise, I believe, yes. Um, and that will take the pressure off of the of the knife the side of the knife and I, then I can remove the knife you can see here I do all four and the knives are held in place uh, with, with springs as well and the springs keep the knives projected out as you're um, adjusting them so it makes it easier when you use uh, uh, a jig that I'm going to show you uh, with the springs to always push out the knife. So so this knife is now fully loosened. The backer plate has been fully loosened. And now I can lift this knife. Be very careful, these knives are very sharp. So you want to lift that knife out like that. And as you see, there's the knife uh, taken out. And we're gonna go ahead and sharpen this one as well. It's the other two is a drum here that holds three of these knives. Now I just want to show you that spring here. And under here, you'll see there's two springs, one here and one there, and that uh, pushes out 
the knife so that as you're adjusting it, it makes the job much easier. Blades removed, it's now time to look at them for sharpening. So the first thing I'm gonna do is understand the angle, the primary angle for these blades. And I went ahead and, and wrote them on here, as you can see, 42, 41. This one was like these. Uh, and what I did was I re ground it um, to a 35 degree primary angle. So as you can see, so let me give you a close up of the anatomy of, of a cutting edge for a blade or a knife like this. So here is uh, the blade here and here uh, is the primary angle right here. Let me see if I can get that better focus. Sorry. This is the primary angle right here. The secondary is this little sliver right here the shiny uh, part of the blade, which I honed last time I sharpened these blades. And as you can see, the primary angle is is more relieved or sharp angle than the secondary angle. So, and the reason why I sharpen the blades or most, most craftsmen sharpen the blades like this is because you really, the cutting edge sharpness is just the tip right here of the blade, very, the edge. So this is where you want to get to be very smooth and very, very sharp. Uh, with, with no defects in it. Uh, and you don't want to be shopping the entire primary bevel because see how wide it is. But when the secondary bevel gets to be about half the width of the primary, which is about where this blade is at now, it's time to recut the primary angle uh, and, and then start the honing process over. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so th that's kind of the determination of when you want to recut the primary angle. I've decided to recut it on this for, the, for this uh, project this exercise because a couple of reasons right now this blade here i measured it very accurately with my um with a, with a measuring gauge like this uh so let me just zoom in on that for you uh and it shows me very accurately what what the blade angle is so basically you put this in here like this and it measures that the primary angle is about 42 degrees as I labeled here, that's a little too sharp for, for a joint knife. Uh, it really, uh, it should be between uh, 35 and, and 40 degrees. So uh, to get, a, for me to get a good cut on this uh, Delta joiner. So I'm gonna recut this to 35 uh, and, uh, and then start with, and then start redoing the, the secondary angles I showed you with a honing process. So, and I've, I've done that already on this blade here. This is this blade. I just finished cutting the primary angle. You can see now it's nice and clean the whole way. And I recut 35 degrees, uh, uh, for this knife. And I'm going to show you how I did that using a belt sander. So here's my setup here. My belt sander, uh, it's a four inch wide belt sander, uh, Tachi model with a nice uh, table to it. And what I've done is I made this jig here that basically is uh, a miter uh, slide, if you want to call it that. And I designed it so that the way that the angles work out is whatever angle I set here, uh, basically I, the cut angle with this other part of the jig here uh, and this other part of the jig fits right in here like this and the blade itself Goes right into here as you can see I cut this groove this this slot by the way is set off at a 60 degree angle uh, on, on this side to the vertical to the to the blade uh, to the belt sorry or 120 degrees here so when the when you work out the angles this turns out to be Whatever I set this table uh, uh, miter gauge to, then I get basically that plus 10 degrees here. So I set this to 25, I'll end up with a 35 cut angle on this. And basically what I do is I just take the blade like this. I, I set it in, into the jig here. I tighten up these screws just to set it in place, keep, prevent it from moving, clamp it in place like this. I put the jig here. I set these slider, these slide bars here, just to lock the jig in place, but still I have movement like this. And I then turn the sander on, the sander on, and I, I just progressively cut back the blade until I get the full width of the, of the cut to be 35 degrees. Let me show you how that I do that.
Okay, well that came out pretty good as you can see. Nice and clean, straight the whole way. So with the primary angle cut now on all three blades, the next thing to do is to start the honing process. So before we start honing the face, that uh, slim secondary angle, uh, we're going to remove the burr on the back of these blades now. Whenever you cut um, metal from one side, you get an edge like that. There's, you always leave a burr in the back side. So I'm going to just use um, this Japanese water stone here. Uh, sorry, whetstone here uh, with water uh, to take that burr off. This is a this is a nice stone I bought um, a while back, and it basically has a two grits to it. There's a thousand grit here. The white is six thousand. Sorry, about six thousand on the white and one thousand on the blue. So I'm gonna start with the 1,000 uh, on the, to just take the burr off of the back side, and then I'm gonna show you how to start to cut this uh, secondary angle just, just on the edge of, of the knife. So I'm going to wet, wet the stone with water, and I'm just gonna run it just lightly on the stone flat, and in circular motion, and that's gonna remove that back burr that we that I just showed you. you. You really can't see it, but you can certainly feel it. And you can feel it when it's uh, nice and smooth because you won't have any roughness. And it's gone, just about almost gone. Just put some water on there. I should have soaked the stone. It's, it's easy if you soak the stone before you start. And that way it won't absorb all the water like you see it there. That's pretty good. It really knocks out down that burr. I'm just going to do this to all three blades, and then we're going to start uh, sharpening that front secondary angle on the blade. Honing. This is this is honing because it's so fine. It's not uh, rough like you saw when I was cutting the primary angle. That was a hundred grit paper I was using on my belt sander, so it's it it is rough, and um, this is this is a thousand now on the blue. 6,000 on the white. So now we're gonna do the front side of, of the blade and we're gonna hone it, the secondary angle. And while I'm explaining this to you, I did put the uh, stone into a bath of water. So we're letting that um, soak up that water as much as it can, give us a, a better finish on the stone. But let's talk about now cutting the secondary angle. Um, so. To do this, so like we said, this primary angle is 35 degrees here. And now I want to just take just the very tip of the knife and hone it to very fine smoothness at a, a different angle, which is what we call the secondary angle. And for that, I'm going to basically make that 40 degrees. That way, the secondary angle is, is going to be more obtuse than the, than the primary angle. And it's just going to take off this, this edge here, sliver, at a, a higher angle so that it will it will make a nice straight hone very fine edge to it uh, just like a razor blade so and to do that um, I made another jig so this is this is my wood block that I made and what I did was I cut um, slots into uh, the block um, that will hold these blades and I set the block uh, the, the angle of these um, these cuts at 40 degrees um, on on the left and and 140 on the right so um, and this you'll see how it works basically I'll place the blades into this jig and this will give me the correct angle for the secondary angle so I'm just gonna push it in there like that and I did three I've, I've seen some videos online and uh, they use two slots which is like this and I figured I, I'm gonna go and then what they'll do, most most uh, joiners, at least the size that I'm dealing with, uh, have three blades. And to do that, 
um, to put the third blade in there, usually the guys will take use another blade twice. But I figured I'd, I'd jump ahead and just cut three slots in there uh, like this. So I'm really going to do all three blades at the same time, as you can see. So let me just persuade this one in a little bit. So with the blades now inserted into my sharpening block or honing block, I'm just going to just check to make sure that they're all even in height. As you can see, they are. Um, so, and now we're going to just go ahead and use this as a guide block to keep the angles right. And we're just going to put it on a whetstone. We're going to start with the 100 and then switch it over to the, to the 6, sorry, start with the 1,000, uh, the blue, and then switch it over to 6,000. So I'm just going to place it on here like this and just go back and forth until I start to form that secondary angle. And just be careful so that you don't cause any uh, sharp movements. Uh, you don't want to chip the stone. So uh, like this. And you keep working it until you start to see that little shiny sliver happening on the very edge of the blade. And once we see that, we're going to uh, flip it over and do the 6,000 grit and get it to be a, a mirror, mirror finish on it. And I'm going to also do the back side halfway through the process to remove the burr that's going to be formed as I do this honing now. see if you can see that so you see that right there this is just starting to form that little edge right here is just starting to form on these blades and as soon as it gets a little bit wider this one is not yet formed so we're cutting this one faster it might be a tad higher so we gotta just be careful with that and to switch the blades around so that we get a nice even um, width of that secondary angle on all three blades. So the other important thing to do while you're you're shopping these blades or holding these blades is to be careful with the block, uh, the whetstone. So it will um, become um, unflat uh, because we are running the the blades in, in these very specific areas, these three areas. So uh, to deal with that, to make sure this stone is always remains completely flat, um, I went ahead and uh, purchased this diamond plate, a flat diamond plate, um, and this is 180 grit. And I use this to shot, to flatten the, the stones. This is diamond, so it's harder than the stone. And what you do is basically you run water, and you take the stone and you basically um, just lap the stone or smooth the stone on the flat plate. The plate is, is flatness is, is one ten thousandth of an inch. Uh, so what you do is you just progressively work the, the stone on the diamond plate, keep it all flat. Not a lot of force. The diamonds will, will cut the stone. And you'll see it'll bring, bring the stone right back to flatness. Uh, it'll take all the grooves out of the stone. Uh, and that, that way you're always assured, whether you're sharpening jointer blades or wood chisels, you always want a flat stone and no grooving, no unevenness in the stone. You don't want to do it too much because you don't want to wear away the stone. Just enough to get it flat. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, I flipped the stone over. Now we're on the 6,000 grit side. I was going to give it some irrigation. And now we're going to just... Uh, just polish again the same edge, only now it's going to come to like a mirror, mirror finish on. Um, so this is going to give it the ultimate like razor blade sharpness. Um, so, and then once again, we're going to relieve the back side with the burr that we make from doing this step. Okay. 
So we're getting pretty close now. Um, you can see, I just want to show you, I can see this. Um, right here, this, this, this very shiny, um, almost chrome-like um, finish on the edge of the blade is what you want to guess. It's just like a, uh, a finish on a, on a razor blade where it's, it's a mirror finish, but it's a very thin line and that's where you want the, it to be the sharpest to, to make the cut. The rest of the blade primary is just supporting that, that, that edge. So, um, and then I, if it doesn't, this block is not the most accurate because it gets wet and it, and it can distort and swell up. So you're not going to get the most accurate angle sometimes. And if that happens, what I do is at the end of the uh, process, I take out the blades individually and I just stand them up on the stone and, and work the edge by hand. And I'll show you. As, as I was saying earlier, if you have a blade where the, the, that stripe of mirror finish doesn't go the whole length of the blade or it varies a lot in, in width, um, then you can do, you can basically do it by hand. So like I said, this block is not the most accurate. So what I do is I, I hold the blade on the stone and you can feel the angle. So that's, that's right on, on the angle now. That's the primary angle. And you just pick it up just a little bit until it rides on that edge. And, and you work, work the, the blade on the stone this way. And that will even out any, you know, issues you have on the edge not being going all the way. Usually what I find is the edge doesn't make it all the way to the tips of the, of the knife. So uh, this, this way ensures that it's, it's all the same um, flatness on, on, and, the, and the angle for the secondary is correct. And you can just visually see that by looking at it for that mirror, mirror finish right on the tip and the edge of the knife. Okay, the blades are just about done now with a nice mirror finish right, right at the edge of the knife. And now we're just going to remove this back burr that we have produced with this honing uh, procedure. So I'm just going to hold it flat and just to take off that burr in the back. And then that's just... the final step in the sharpening process to get a very, very sharp is I just use a leather strobe here with uh, some compound um, and just like you would do with a laser and you basically just run the blade um, backwards on on the strobe and this really takes the any you know very very fine uh, edges or particles off of the edge so you have a very very sharp edge Okay, so now it's time to reinstall them. I'm gonna put gloves on because these blades are very, very sharp. Like we said, razor sharp. So I've gotten sliced up with these things before, so I'm not gonna let it happen this time. So I'm gonna just take the blade. I'm gonna put it in so that the back of the blade is against the, uh, the retaining bar, uh, the mounting bar. So um, this would allow, this is the way that's supposed to go in and I put them in backwards before, so just remember what I'm saying is, uh, okay. So I'm just gonna space them equal distance to overhang the drum by about an eighth of an inch at each end. I'm gonna push that retainer bar down. Remember the spring is trying to push it back up again and just loosely tighten them. Tighten them just enough to hold the bar and the blade in place because we're gonna have to set the height on. I'm going to show you how I do that in just a minute. I still want the, the bounciness right like that. All right, so now that we have the blade installed uh, preliminarily, would you make sure the fence is at is perfectly square to the table, which I already done. And the easiest way that I found to to set the blade height is I use this uh, joint appal. Um, it is a, uh, a nice gadget you can buy online. I think I bought this either uh, a woodworking site or Amazon, but uh, it's not a lot of money, maybe $40, $50. And what you do is 
this is a nice device because it has these magnets here, these very strong magnets. And you put it on the table like this. And what it does is it sets the height of the tip of the blade, the knife's edge, right even with the outfeed table, which is your main goal. It's all you want to do. You don't worry about the infeed because that's adjustable. So you want to slide it. And I've already put a couple of marks here. So this mark represents top dead center. And I've already marked that on my joiner. So I know that the blade, as long as the blade is right aligned with that mark, that's the highest point you know, of, of the blade rotational wise. And then there's another equivalent mark set off by the distance here. There are two marks on the, on the gauge that you line these marks up with like this. And be careful not to dull the blade or chip it, but you just slide it over like that. And then what this device does is it pulls, the magnets pull the blade up right to the exact height of the ta of the outfeed table because this, these are gauge blocks with magnets in it, so everything is secured down. And just to make sure that we have enough movement there, you just I'm just checking here to make sure that the blade has come up to touch that, that the magnet has grabbed it. And now all you have to do is just tighten this up. So it makes it a lot easier than doing it with a with just a normal gauge block or a wood block or a straight edge. So tighten the nut here, sorry, behind here. Okay, you just pull it off and you fully tighten it like that. And then just as a final check, you want to just take a block of wood like this so you don't chew up the blade with a piece of metal. And I took off the the, blade, the belt guard in the back here. So um, this is a good test that if you hold the gauge block here, it should move. See, it just touches it. It's good. It moves about, pulls it in about an eighth of an inch, forward eighth of an inch. So that's about right. So that's basically, you're all set. So just give these one more squeeze. And then we're gonna do the other, the other two blades the same way. Um, and we're gonna give it a test run. Okay, with the new blades in installed and set, we're gonna now take a test piece, a test run to see how well they cut, how evenly they cut. <laughs> Okay, so it looks pretty good. Uh, it looks really good, actually. A nice flat plane, no no marks at all from the knives, nice and smooth. And um, it also um, has a nice even uh, width to it. And so it worked really well. So I really appreciate uh, you watching the video with me and uh, thanks for watching.